Netflix has basically commissioned a Squid Game reality show, which is essentially just a real life version of Squid Game, except obviously people don't actually get killed when they lose. And there's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about in here because it's 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 really it's a really good watch. It's a it's really fun, as was the original Squid Game, but I think there's so many issues with it that I just kept laughing at while I was watching it. Some big, some some not so big. So let's get the big stuff out of the way. The first thing that I find really funny is that the actual Squid Game series is about anti-capitalism and how capitalism just fucks everyone up, right? That like all of the, the whole premise of the show is that, because if, if you don't know, they're playing these games that are funded by billionaires who want to watch people die and fight for their lives. And basically they're, they're games, but if you lose, you die. They kill you on the spot, right? There's one victor, they take home four point. Six three million dollars or something like that. The whole thing in Squid Game is that these people would rather compete in the Squid Games where they could die if they lose than be in real life society. So they willingly choose to be at the Squid Game in the Squid Game because real life they have no hope. They all are in debt. They all you know have no prospects of getting out of debt gambling issues, cry, cry, criminal issues, or just generally don't have enough money to live and survive. So they're like, all right, I'll take my chances in Squid Game, right? It's very anti-capitalist. And then spinning it off to turn it into a reality show where the people in the reality show are actually saying in their pieces to camera, oh, I really need this money cost of living is so high and I can't support my family or my kids. It, it, it's like, oh, okay, so Netflix made this show, but they don't get the show because it's clear that these people genuinely need this money, which is why, like, I don't know, it is just something ethically that feels really wrong about Netflix doing this that I just couldn't stop laughing at because like, the whole point of the show is, oh, this is this is bad, but then they're literally doing it in real life, except without killing the people. That's the big stuff out of the way. Like the philosophical stuff is the show makes no sense if you understand the the or the source material, I guess, for lack of a better term. The first episode, and it just echoes, it's basically just Squid Game PG version. Like no murder, no death, no horror kind of aspects. Like there's no real stakes. Like the, the original Squid Game is really scary and intense to watch because you know what's at stake. The funniest part about the Squid Game reality TV series is the producers have clearly told them. So when they do go out, instead of them being shot, there's just like a, a fake kind of like, they've clearly got like some pack on their chest that explodes and shoots out like this red ink that makes it look like they've been shot, which is a creative way to like keep the show alive, uh, to keep the original like concept alive without actually killing people, right? That's all well and good. <laughs> the funniest part is that obviously the producers have told them, okay, if you get eliminated and your thing bursts, you have to pretend like you're falling over dead. So, so half of them do it and they're like really badly acting like, Ugh, and they pretend that they're dead. But then some of them, like particularly, I noticed some of the older people, they just like, their thing explodes, they're standing up and they're like, ah, oh, no. And then they just sit down. <laughs> it's really funny. And then some of them, the thing explodes and they're literally like, you can just see them laughing at how stupid it is that they have to pretend to die. And they're like looking at the other people and they're like, Ugh, and then they're just cracking up laughing and the camera quickly cuts. I found that really, really funny. Uh, and it's, and it's like, just, it, it is, it works really well conceptually as a reality show. Like it has like, I guess, survivor vibes where there's like alliances and villains and trade be betrayals and all that stuff. And that, and great, it's a good show. Don't get me wrong. There's been a lot of controversy around the new Squid Game TV show because people are saying that particularly in the first challenge, it was like freezing temperatures and they had to be outside for like six hours and everyone had hypothermia. And, you know, now they're taking legal action against Netflix or the company because they shouldn't have been treated in such inhumane ways and et cetera, et cetera. I have a lot of thoughts on this. And I'm like, as I get older, I'm becoming more and more cynical and bitter towards this stuff. 
And maybe people hate that. I don't know. But I genuinely believe what I'm saying. So I'm just going to say it. You know who isn't going to take legal action and who isn't going to complain to the producers? The person who wins the 4.63 million. Okay, who was in the exact same set of circumstances as everyone else. And my point is, all of these people that did the first game got eliminated within the first few minutes, right? They're all annoyed because they had to sign up for this game. They had to go through probably heaps of auditions. They probably got paid like a nominal fee for their time on the day. They get out there, it's shit conditions. It's not organized that well, which admittedly is the production company's fault, right? Who are trying to navigate organizing 460 people, right? And then they start the game. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna get through. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna do really well. Within the first five minutes, 200 people are eliminated. They've gone through all of this, probably months and months of prep. They show up on the day, within five minutes, they're eliminated. They're like, oh, that, this sucks. This is annoying. And then they're angry and they're like, you know what? This was bullshit. We all had to stand in the cold and what? Just to get eliminated within a few minutes? That's stupid. We got to take legal action against them. I guarantee you no one who got to the last couple rounds is doing that. It's only these people who showed up it wasn't what they thought and they didn't get to go through to the next round because like on their own on their own error they made a mistake and now they're upset and they want something out of the show because they because they spent a lot of time auditioning they spent a lot of time you know doing it and they didn't get like uh, the reward they wanted and you can see funnily enough you can see one of the things i noticed when i was watching the first one is they all have their hands in their pockets which someone online has said that's because we one of the contestants like that's because it was freezing cold Everyone's running with their hands in their pockets, like, cause it was freezing. And I get that. And it definitely is on the production company to provide like, I don't know, some kind of heating or some kind of making sure people aren't getting freezing. But I also think like you signed up for it. Like you can leave, you can, you can say, Hey, I can't, I can't do it. I'm going to leave. I seriously doubt anyone's going to be like, no, you have to stay. Could be wrong, but my general theory on this, and I hate how bitter and old manny it sounds, is that no one in the last few rounds is going to sue Netflix. It's only people from that first round who are upset that they didn't get through. Yes, things were probably bad. They didn't, they were probably really cold. They didn't feel like they were, basically they don't feel like it was fair on them. And now they're like, I want to get something out of this because I wasted so much of my time on it and it was all a waste of time because I got out straight away. So they're upset. That's that's what I think. I don't think that, yeah, I don't think the winner is going to sue for any damages or anyone who got to the top. I am going to keep watching it though. I find it really interesting. But yeah, it definitely is completely antithetical to the anti-capitalist messaging of the source. And that that's the funniest part about our society, isn't it? That like, we make a show about how capitalism is really bad for our society and how it makes people suffer, right? And if we reward capital in our society, then of course we are going to be in situations where some people have enormous amounts of, of power over other people and how, you know, very wealthy people keep their wealth in their family and just, you know, history repeats itself. Generations inherit everything or nothing and the world lives on that and that's not going to change, right? We make that. We make those points. It touches the world. The whole world sees and goes, yes, this is so accurate. And then we're like, then Netflix goes, all right, so how can we monetize this concept further and makes the fucking reality show? Really stupid.